Three poker bracelets in 12 months, winning almost everything to divorce, cheating and losing millions. Phil Ivey is one of the biggest names in poker and this is how it all happened. The rise and fall of Phil Ivey began on the 1st of February 1977, Riverside, California. Born into a poor but close-knit family, they would value time together over money. This would shape Ivey's life and success in multiple ways. First, it would bring him to poker at a young age as the family held game night on a weekly basis, organised by his grandfather. Family friends and sometimes neighbours would stop by to play. Second, it would also install a belief about money that would deeply impact his poker strategy. By age 8, he knew the game well, coming up with his own strategies to win. He loved it, continuing to play the game over and over, whilst other children would have given up. By 16, he was organising his own poker nights with friends where they would play for fun and occasionally a few small bets. In an interview with Barry Greenstein, he said, Everyone was against me playing poker in my entire family. The only one who was for me playing was my grandfather. And it's a good job because the epic rise of Phil Ivey gained momentum at this point. Still at high school, Ivy sourced a fake ID so he could sneak into casinos and play. He didn't take long before he was known all around Atlantic City as Jerome Graham. This was the name on his fake ID. He'd play blackjack, craps and poker for up to 15 hours at a time. Finding success had become a full-on obsession for Phil Ivy. He wasn't even deterred by a six-month losing streak around this time. This period is when he earned the name No Home Jerome. The real source of origin is unknown, although there are three stories to where it comes from. From. The first is that casino employees created it in line with the masses of time that he spent there. Second, it's because he said that he would repeatedly miss the two hour bus home, having to sleep under the boardwalk by the beach, and the third, because he would go broke whilst playing in the casino. The third version also has him sleeping rough on the beach. He wasn't homeless though, as he graduated from Old Bridge High School in New Jersey. He's been quoted to say at this point in his life, he never thought there was any way he was gonna do anything other than be a successful poker player. Come 1990, he got a job at a telemarketing firm out of New Brunswick, although he was more interested in playing poker against his co-workers. Having settled there, he would work the phones between focusing on his passion, poker. It's interesting because this comment on the Poker King channel shares a lot about Ivy's mindset. I wanted to win so bad, like I paid attention to every single detail of everything that was going on. A few years later, he was looking to go pro, just aged 20 in 1997. Once Phil Ivey no longer had to use someone else's name to set foot in the casinos, he entered as many tournaments as he could. The first tournament he ever won was the Trops Customer Appreciation Invitation Tournament in Atlantic City. He banked $1,000 for that in 1998. Financially, a breathtaking rise was just around the corner, something that would make him a target in many ways, bringing several problems to his door. This was Phil Ivey's golden era, long before accusations of cheating. In 2000, he was the first person to defeat Amarillo Slim at the World Series of Poker Final Table. It was a landmark victory as not only did he pocket $195,000 for the win, but it gave him a massive confidence boost and put him in the limelight. This victory also gave him his first career bracelet, age 23. Two years later, he was nicknamed the Phenom after winning three World Series of Poker bracelets in one year. Time with Phil Melvis Jr., Ted Forrest and Puggy Pearson. It was an unstoppable run with many a tribute in his fearless play to his disregard for money. Like all greats, he was in it for the process. He loved the game more than the financial return. A quote from Ivy says it all when he says, If you can't put $100 in your pocket and light it on fire, I don't think you can play poker for a living. This emotionless approach is a clear-cut advantage within Ivy's poker strategy. It allowed him to place in the top four 25 times between 2002 and 2009. It was around then that people started to realise that Phil Ivy's stare was a significant part of his poker strategy as he won a million dollars for first prize at the Monte Carlo Millions in 2005, followed by another $600,000 the day after at the Full Tilt Poker.net live from Monte Carlo. In 2006, he played against the Texas billionaire Andy Bill on the European Poker Tour in Barcelona and also the All-Star Challenge for European Poker Masters in London. 
In 2007, he didn't slow down, winning another $1.99 million on Full Tilt, $120,000 on NBC's Poker After Dark, and played again on NBC's National Heads Up Poker Championship, where he was defeated by the actor Don Cheadle in the first round. For someone so wealthy, many would say, why bother? And his love of the game is the only reasonable answer. There are so many victories in the period leading up to 2009, it's hard to keep track. However, to put things into perspective, his live tournament winnings alone have exceeded $26.25 million by 2018. He's the youngest player to have won 10 World Series of poker bracelets at 38 and 3 in a year. And also, he banks $19.2 million in cash game winnings online by 2011. So where did it all go wrong for Phil Ivey? The rise and fall of Phil Ivey wouldn't be complete if we didn't take a look at the problems. In December 2009, Ivey and his then wife, Lucetta, filed for a joint petition of divorce after seven years of marriage. It was a dramatic divorce case where she claimed her ex-husband and his attorney, David Chesnoff, of conspiring to deprive her of equal share of the community property acquired during the marriage. And she wasn't bluffing. He was ordered to part with $180,000 a month in alimony and $2.2 million worth of jewellery and designer purses. Now this must have been a stressful time for all involved and it showed within his game. Those kind of numbers are enough to make anyone cranky. What's wrong? Why are you cranky? Too early. It gets worse though, the emotionless beast that was formerly known for being ice cold started to experience a wobble. In fact, in 2011, using the name Polarizing on Full Tilt Poker is down $6.3 million on just over 216,000 hands. On Poker Stars, down $2.5 million. This is obviously proof that a problematic outside life can affect your game dramatically, although it probably wasn't just the divorce. In 2012, he was involved in a high profile litigation with Mayfair Casino in London. He sued them for refusing to pay out his winnings. They claimed that he was cheating with the use of a technique called edge sorting, something he more or less confirmed later on, although he appealed to the Supreme Court, where the judge ruled that his actions were in fact cheating. However, this raises an important point. If the house knew of exploitations with its defective cards, then why did they use them? Much like modern bookmakers, I doubt they're really giving players their money back who'd lost their money whilst they were being used in the alternate direction. A familiar tale, one rule for the house and another for players. Sadly for Ivy, things got worse in 2014 as Bogata filed a $9.6 million lawsuit against him claiming that he'd been cheating, exploiting playing cards manufacturing over four sessions in 2012. Again, he lost and had to pay out $10 million. These very public cases didn't do a lot for Ivy's confidence or image, something that was made worse in 2019 when Daniel Cates and Isla Trincher filed an illegal objection to Bogata's seizure of Ivy's championship winnings. They claimed that they funded 100% of his buy-in in return for a significant portion of his winnings. This baffled onlookers. The only realistic reason for this was that he'd run out of money himself, a long way from the alternate estimations of Phil Ivy's net worth online. It's a mysterious turn of events as Ivy's not short on other sources of income. Up until 2011, he received $920,000 per month for his collaboration with Full Tilt Poker. Founded Ivy Poker in 2012, a play for free app where you can compete against the pros online, and founded the Ivy League poker training site in 2014. He also won a handful of big prizes between 2012 and 2015, such as $250,000 at the Aussie Millions High Roller event in 2012, followed by 12th place in the main event for $100,000 and $4 million in the Aussie Millions boutique two years later. In 2015, he pocketed another $2.2 million in the Aussie Millions once more, making him the only player in history with two consecutive championships and three championships out of four years. Regardless of the controversy, it's fair to say that Phil Ivey is one hell of a poker player and these achievements are just the ones we know about. There are many unconfirmed stories about private high stakes games with Chinese businessmen and celebrities where he's likely to have won quite easily. However, he's not the only gambling mastermind to have been covered on this channel. Check out these stories here in the end screen for some fascinating insights. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.